If you're looking to create awesome content that grabs attention, you're gonna need to have the right lens for the job. But now, here's the catch. There are like million lenses out there, all trolling fancy terms at you. Focal length, f-stops, stabilization, aperture, lens mounts, it's like totally secret language. Not to mention there are tons of different video styles. And some lenses are cool for one thing, but totally flop for another. So with all these choices and crazy words, you might feel like picking up the right lens for you is mission impossible. But don't sweat, because in today's video we are spilling all beans about lenses so you won't blow a cash on the wrong one. With that being said, let's dive in! Ok folks, when we talk about lenses, there is only one thing you need to know above all, and that's focal length. Now, the focal length doesn't actually refer to the length from front to the back of your lens, it's in fact the distance between the optical center of the lens and the camera sensor measured in millimeters. But these are technicalities that don't really matter to know. What does matter to know is, the longer the focal length, the more zoomed your photo will be. Here is the 50mm from my Canon M50 kit lens, an ultra wide angle lens capturing a broad view from both sides. Moving to 22mm, still wide but not ultra wide. This is my go to lens, especially in tight spaces. Now the 35mm from my Canon M50 marks the end of wide angle lenses. Standard lenses are hovering around 50mm. Currently I'm using speed booster on my Canon M50 due to the different lens mount. Telephoto lenses like this 85mm bring your subject closer. And here is 200mm, providing significant zoom. Lenses can go up to 6, 8 or even 1200. But you get the point so far. Now let's dive into the differences between those focal lens. Check out those two pictures, one with 50mm, one with 70mm. Did you notice how far the background is with the ultra wide lens? That's called scene compression. The longer the focal length, the more compressed your picture will be. This is really important to keep in mind, especially if you're filming people because of the compression, people's faces can start look weird and unnatural if the subject is too close to the camera. In general, with every lens under 24mm, if you're too close to the camera, you're gonna start seeing all these strange effects over people's faces. So far with 50mm lens, which is standard, I had the best experience when I was filming someone. Knowing about the focal length is cool, but the real deal is asking yourself one simple question. And the question is, what type of content are you shooting and what focal length is the right for the job? For example, let's say you're filming real estate or showcase your YouTube recording space. What lens do you think will make more sense? A telephoto or wide angle lens? Here is my recording space filming it with 50mm, which is not very zoomed, but still is not wide enough to catch all the details. Ultra or just wide angle lens will be better choice in this situation. On another hand, if you are filming sport event, what focal length do you think will be better? Of course, we want the telephoto one so we can catch details from a distance. This is the reason you have to make sure you know what type of content you will be shooting before you buy lens. You don't want to blow cash on a lens which won't do the job or your content will look weird and you won't be able to catch any details in your shot. There are a few more things to mention here about the focal length. And be patient as this part is the longer one. First, we got the blurriness in the background or also known as bokeh. Straight on the point, the higher focal length, the more background blur you're gonna have. This is due to the scene compression we talked about a little bit earlier in the video. If we go back and see again those two pictures, it's pretty obvious how much more blur there is in 50mm compared to 22mm. Using higher focal length is the perfect way to keep only the subject in focus if you have destructive background. But if you're filming landscape, you might consider better choice to be a wide angle lens or with other words shorter focal length where you can have in focus the subject plus the background. Wide angle lenses are capable of keeping the subject and the background in focus and this is because of their plane in focus is much deeper than the telephoto lenses, which 
is very tiny, meaning everything standing in front or beyond this space will be out of focus and will be blurry. There is more to consider about focal length and this is stabilization. For example, if you're filming on a go with higher focal length, you can see how much more shake your video is compared to the wide angle lens. This problem can be easily resolved with gimbal, so you can film nice and smooth videos while you're on a move. Finally, the last key element that has to be considered when we talk about focal length is if we want prime or variable focal length. Here is my Canon 55 to 250 entry level lens and to be honest it's a great zoom lens meaning I can film anywhere in between 55 to 250 mil. Zoom in and zoom out. It's just a great lens that you can film lots of different styles of content with just a single lens. Better option here is actually 24 to 70 mil. On another hand, we have prime lenses, which are fixed on single focal length, and by the way, they're my favorite. Because of the single focal length, prime lenses might sound a bit boring and not practical, but they have their pluses too, like sharper optics, because of the fewer moving elements inside the lenses. There is something else I forgot to mention, we got to cover it as it's related to the focal length, because you might get confused when you start looking to buy lens and that's related to your camera sensor actually. With that being said, you have to know that not all cameras have the same sensor sizes. You see, if your camera has a full frame sensor, the focal length we are recording is true same as is listed on the lens, meaning if you're filming with 50 mil on a full frame camera, the image you see will be actually 50 mil. From another hand, if your camera sensor is smaller like on my Canon M50, it has APS-C crop sensor, which is 1.5 times smaller than the full frame camera sensors. What does it mean? It means that when you're recording on a crop sensor camera, the picture is cropped in, producing a bit more zoom in image. To know exactly how much that crops in when you're digging for lenses, all you got to know is to multiply 1.5 times the focal length listed on your lens and the number you get is your actual focal length. In that case, when you buy a lens and you want to have the same look on your videos like the full frame cameras, you need to look for lenses with even wilder focal length. And there you go, the focal length part is done. Next up, aperture. The aperture of lenses, quite simply, is the opening through which light passes into the camera. The wider the opening, the more light can reach the camera sensor, which in turn affects the exposure of the image. Just like the human eye contracts in bright condition and expand in low light environments, the aperture needs to decrease or increase to achieve correct exposure. The secret is to look for lenses with lower aperture as possible, because the lower the aperture, the better quality of the photos and the videos we will get in low light situations. If you are filming a YouTube video and there is a lack of light or you are on a concert and you want just to grab some amazing videos and photos, aperture of 1.4 will do much better than 5.6. Also it's not only the better performing in low light situation but also increases the blurriness of the background, in other words creates that amazing as all known cinematic look. This is a shot with aperture of 2.0 and here is the same shot aperture has been set to f10 you can see how darker the second shot is and this is due to the smaller aperture but if we increase the exposure so we can make the shot look similar in terms of brightness did you notice the difference and if yes what has changed you see there is a huge difference in the amount of the background blur and all that because of the different aperture there is only one problem with the lower aperture the higher price tag. I've been digging for lenses with lower aperture and the price is far from something that everyone can afford especially if you're just starting out this journey and you're not even sure if this is the right fit for you. Now if you was already searching lenses you probably saw that some of them have aperture starting from f4 and goes to f5.6. This is actually the lenses I got at the very beginning. It's entry level lens and it means that when you zoom in, the aperture goes from 4 to 5.6 and your shots get darker. There are zoom lenses with fixed aperture and will keep let's say 2.8 aperture even if you zoom in or out, 
but once again we get to the point of the price tag. That's all with the zoom lenses and their fixed and variable aperture. But also we have prime lenses and here it becomes interesting. No idea what is the reason behind, I guess it's because of the less moving parts and simplicity of the prime lenses, we can find lenses like my 22mm at f-stop of 2.0 for just a bit over 200 pounds, making me able to get way better quality of my shots in low light situations. And there we go, we just covered two of the biggest and most important factors about lenses. There is only one more factor I want to cover so you won't end up buying a lens with focal length and aperture you want just to find out it's not for your camera. Are you serious? And we're gonna talk about lens mounts. That's right, every camera brand has a different lens mount and each brand has subcategory lens mount based on the different level cameras. For example, here is my Canon 2000D, also known as Rebel T7. This camera has EF, EFS mount, meaning you want to buy a lens labeled with EFS. Or here is another example of my Canon M50, which has EFM lens mount, and your target is to find lenses labeled with EFM. There is a lot more that we can talk about when it comes to cameras and lenses. But this is everything from me for now. I hope with this video I helped you a little bit more so you can make your choice easier. But just in case if you get a little bit more confused after all of this stuff, let's just make a quick recap. First, be sure what kind of content you want to film. Second, choose your focal length based on your content. Third, grab the lens with lower aperture your pocket allows it. And four, make sure it's the right lens mount. And this is everything from me and I hope you enjoyed the video. If that was the case, please don't forget to like and subscribe for my channel. My name is Kalin Denev and I will see you in my next video. Happy recording!